it was a game, and and, and uh, I suppose I remember the old fashioned, uh, the fact that it is black and white, and and it was you know played on a a, a Game Boy. I, I definitely remember that. But of course, it is completely different now, um, you know, and, and the sort of paying it on, you know, smartphones. Um, I certainly didn't know the story. I absolutely didn't know that it was invented by some, you know, by, by a Russian uh, person. I, I didn't know the whole connection with Robert Maxwell and Sega and all that. So reading the script, I, I thought was fascinating, A, for that knowledge. And also, it, it's like a, you know, a fast thriller. And, well, it is a fast thriller, and you just, you know, um, it's fascinating. Yeah. There were quite a few images that had been pulled together by uh, researchers for the film, but I, I definitely went off and, and researched um, the characters because they're real, you know. And, you know, I never think that you should be doing a looky likey, but I do think you try and get the essence of somebody. And, not, and then it depends on the director, and then it depends on the actor themselves, how far they want to go. Um, I mean, in Taron's case, um, Hank Rogers, um, I, I believe he's part Indonesian, so he's got a, a much darker skin tone uh, and a much darker curly hair. And, and I had to make that look on Taron be more believable, so, so everything was pulled back a bit. But I think also the fact that it's set in the 80s, which, you know, there's all big hair in the 80s, um, you, you know, that it it's... Um, we, we knew we had to push it a little way, but I don't think it would look right if we tried to make um, Taron very dark skinned um, and, and not necessary, I don't think. I, I've worked with Mark Coulier so many times and I love the way he works. I like the collaboration with him. I like the fact that, that you know, we would talk about the hair and the makeup together and, you know, we would accommodate each other and, you know, we would, even, you know, I would say to him, are you... I think that hair works and he would say I think that nose works or should we go for the second nose or you know I love that collaboration that it, it's not just two people doing two separate things um and, and so it made sense for me you know to make sure Mark was on board the project um and, and also John had worked with Mark so he was 100% up for him coming on board um and it was it was great and it was again the same thing you know we we, we knew we had to get um, Roger scanned. We knew there was a, a fat suit involved. Um, we did tests on that. We tried different size suits on him. Um, obviously, one then you work very closely with Nat, the costume designer, which I would anyway. You know, with all our characters, you know, it's a whole creative design that that works when you all come together. I, I suppose the prosthetic ones are rewarding because you are completely changing somebody. Um, and, and in, I suppose Gorbachev was, is also quite interesting because Matthew came to us quite late, so we couldn't, well, we didn't have the time to do the full makeup that we did on Roger. So that one's quite interesting because it's smaller pieces, and I've always liked that as well. I like the fact that you can change somebody just by doing very small things, like he's got little cheek pieces on and a nose, and and then obviously we shave the top of his head and then put on um, hair round the side. Um, so I suppose that's reward rewarding because we had to pull it together very quickly. Um, but I do think it is amazing to watch uh, Roger as Maxwell, you know, the, the voice, everything. The other thing about this film is uh, John was very keen to make sure that, you know, if we had Russian characters, that actually they were played by Russian actors. It, that made it a little bit difficult because obviously availability, getting them in, the COVID, the, you know, the, the, the visas and all that. So we did get our actors quite late. Um, Nikita, who plays Alexei, um, we had quite a funny um, uh, WhatsApp thing going on where I had him having his he taking his own head shape for me because I knew I had to get him a wig because I knew his own hair wasn't long enough. So that was um, quite entertaining as he was showing me pictures on his WhatsApp of how it was going along. So he was brilliant. And in fact, all the Russian actors are amazing. I mean, their English is so good, but, you know, they, they brought, I think, another element to this film. Baldwin, who's just fantastic, the DOP, he told us quite early on that he had different coloured palettes from the point of view of lighting and that makes a huge difference to me and I knew that he was going to desaturate uh, the Russian so any colours were, were diffused. I, I was a bit worried about wig colours and skin tones to begin with but actually it, it's fine. I do pump up 
um, especially Taryn's colour, uh, because he's, you know, we wanted him to have a little bit more of a tanned look. So I do have to do more on him when, when we're shooting the Russian bit because it is more diffused. But then, you know, uh, I, you know, we've got a Las Vegas bit, which is really bright and crisp and, you know, so it is nice to know these things. And it's also quite interesting when you're watching on set, when you look at the, you know, the, the properly set up monitors, um, how it all looks. And in fact, of course, that also affected the prosthetic makeup, uh, which, of course, I had to pass on to Mark. And we did do a little test of, you know, how much colour it did diffuse um, from their faces.